casino workers of Reddit. What is the saddest thing you have witnessed that is gambling related? I worked in the restaurant of a casino. We had a mother and daughter who were regulars but not there every day. Maybe once or twice a week they'd come in and spend at least 8 hours on the slot machines. One time they hit it big. They won the jackpot which if memory serves was about 15,000 pounds they looked so happy and they were crying tears of joy. I was happy for them. They were really nice people. Instead of going home and enjoying their winnings they stuck around feeding more money into the machine. They came back every day for the next week. Within that week the 15,000 pounds was gone. After another week they were both banned for asking other guests for money to borrow so they could play. Dopamine is a drug. And gambling feeds it. Like 15 years ago my husband was a bar porter at a casino. He would bus his cart around for everyone in the middle of the night and get off in the morning. He says when he would come back the next evening some of the people playing the slots would still be there from the previous night. They would wear diapers they didn't have to leave their machine. Worked casino security. Would always find panties and underwear stuffed between machines. Maybe they pissed them. No idea. Didn't smell them. Worst person I saw spent over 30k on table games over 3 days. Never left the casino. Best guy I ever saw would come in every Friday. Play $500, max bet, on blackjack. Win 3 times and he walks out with 2k. Never in the casino longer than 15 minutes. Won far more often than he ever lost. Yes some days he would lose on the first hand. But I would say 80 plus percent of the time he walked out with between 1k to 2k. Never playing more than 3 hands. Not casino worker but worked one summer at a bar where people could bet on horses run. I have seen a struggling father of 5 win 6000 euros in one race. And lose it all within the next few hours. The kids, pre-teen to mid-teens, were with him. The older ones tried to stop him but failed. The tears of his daughter didn't seem to move him. It has been 10 years. The guy is still gambling but his kids don't speak to him. When people have kids and do that shit it's the worst. One of my dad's ex-co-workers had a father who lost 3 houses to gambling. Another time in the past another co-worker got a call from his dad. He had won around $10 at the casino, which was an insane amount at the time. 30 minutes pass and he gets another call. It was dad again asking his son to send him money because he lost it all and didn't have for the long distance bus tickets. It's absolute insanity. While riding the train to said city while on the way to buy said house. Bet it all on a cards game. I can't imagine how it must feel like witnessing your parents deprive you of money just for the sake of throwing it away at some stupid gamble. This thread has got so many depressing stories. And it's all because of the mindset people have when gambling. My dad taught me that when you go to a casino. You shouldn't be thinking about making money. You are there for entertainment. And that entertainment costs money. If you're lucky and wise you can walk away slightly ahead or maybe just break even. But most times expect to walk out having paid money for the time and there. Not a terrible philosophy you know. To add on to this. You can decide how much the entertainment of a casino is worth to you. Dedicate an amount of money you can afford to lose and leave the rest at home. I've worked in casinos for over a decade and the saddest thing I routinely see is young children standing around waiting on their parents to finish gambling. We track down the parents and make them leave but they always come back. Former casino security here. We routinely patrolled the parking lots looking for children in cars waiting on their parents. And would more often than not find them. We'd call the police department who would then get social services involved. Haha. <laughs> Casino security. That reminds me of a thing that happened when I was a kid. Let me preface this story by saying my parents and gamblers at all. They dabble a bit when on vacations but are very thrifty people. So. I was about. 8. And my sister 10 back in the 90s. We were taking a family vacation and passed through Las Vegas. Stayed in Circus Circus. My parents taught us about stranger danger stuff and trusted us enough to take care of ourselves. 
we would go off to the arcades and watch the free circus acts while my parents went to the casino to play penny slots and enjoy some of them time. My sister and I were waiting near the casino entrance to meet up with our parents and playing with our arcade prizes. When the casino guard near the door approached us with a worried face and asked us where our parents were. We assured him that our parents will be coming out soon. Don't worry about it. Anyway. He didn't seem that convinced but went back to his place. Glancing over at us occasionally. Soon after that. Our parents came out and got us. I've always thought back to that guy over the years and when I got older. Understood where he was coming from. Poor guy. Just looking at two seemingly abandoned kids sitting around on the carpet. But we were having tons of fun. But I really appreciated the thought. TL. Doctor thank you for caring. Dude. When I turned 19 my dad took me to Ontario to go to a casino with my stepmother. I remember my dad and I are walking the floor and we stop at the roulette table to see a guy with what was easily $5,000 on the table. A woman is standing next to him openly praying with tears streaming down her face as he is gambling this big chunk of cash. Dealer spins and they lose. All the color drains from his face and I was confident he just ruined his life. Next morning we are packing up to leave and notice rescue boats and fire trucks at the falls. Someone mentioned that some guy threw himself over the falls. I always hoped it was never the guy from the casino and he straightened everything out. Well recently in the Philippines. There was a man addicted to gambling and had gambled so much his wife left him with his children and he had some bad debts with the wrong people so he tried to settle it. He went into Manila's biggest casino. And started setting the game tables on fire and tried to grab over 1 million pesos worth of chips. I know it's stupid. Roughly about $20,000. After realizing he was caught and no way out. He went into one of the hotel rooms and set himself on fire. Taking multiple people with him due to smoke inhalation. It's just sad really. He was so addicted to gambling. His friends and family say that he actually won big games. $10,000 games slash 500,000 pesos games. But he was never content. Edit. Sources from mom's friends who was working there that night who was luckily evacuated before the situation got out of hand. A friend of mine used to work at the daycare in a casino. A daycare. They served them meals and had snack they could buy. There was one kid she just made a name tag for in advance because he was there so much. All day. I think this wins for saddest. Watching a woman begging for change outside so she could get the bus home. She does this on the first or second day of every month. That sounds like it's right after she gets her paycheck. I was dealing blackjack one day. Only one guy at my table. Looked to be about 45-50. We had been playing for a while. And the poor guy couldn't win to save his life. He was playing right, splitting 8s and aces. Staying on 17s. The whole 9. One hand I have an ace up. And open insurance. He looks at me. His nose a little red and his eyes wet. Are you alright? Sir? He broke down crying. The poor dude had just lost his wife to his gambling addiction earlier that day. She couldn't take it anymore. I tried to console him. We have a program at my casino that will limit your gambling to help your addiction. He cheered up. And later visited to thank me. Saying he got his wife back and turned his life around. Wow. A happy ending and a thread full of misery. Desperation. And death. I work in the hotel department of a casino. One of our regular guests is this Indian guy and his wife who come to play the slots every week. One night the wife had to use the bathroom. But didn't want to give up her machine. She couldn't find anyone to keep watch of it for her. So she sheet her pants in the casino. And just kept playing. Melbourne Casino. 2003. My girlfriend and I were walking through the casino in the early hours of the morning and there was a strange looking guy moving oddly about 15 meters in front of us. We both kind of slowed up because his movement seemed so strange. Then it happened. He kind of huddled over and put his arms in a position like he was imitating a chicken very quickly. 
then he shook his right leg and her drop dropped out from the bottom of his pants and onto the casino floor. We both stopped in absolute disbelief. He just made a quick right turn and sat at a pokey slot machine and continued playing. Not a casino worker but I do remember a story that I still think about to this day. I was in Niagara Falls many years ago, Canada, and started playing blackjack at a cheaper table, $5 minimum. Played for a while and started doing well. Another player joined in. He had a mental impairment that I can't pinpoint. He was friendly enough. And said his goal was to get a calm breakfast. For those who don't know. If you have membership card to the casino you can usually earn points towards free stuff while you play games. The table starts hitting a nice streak. House busts quite a bit and we're all profiting. At this point the new guy earned himself about $100. We joke with him that now he can buy us all breakfast. That sort of thing. More time passes and he's betting table max now. I believe he was up past $800 or so. I was also happily up a few hundred as well. We start to get a bit of a crowd and he asks the dealer if he has enough points for a free breakfast now. We all laugh but turns out he was dead serious. The dealer asks the pit boss who replies not yet. With a smile. Well as luck usually works. The table starts losing. Buddy is still betting Max and falling fast. He keeps asking if he earned his breakfast yet. We're all starting to insist that he could walk away now and buy himself the best breakfast in town many times over. But he was completely focused on getting this one calm breakfast. Every time he asked. The pit boss just kept saying nope. Not yet. Even the dealer at one point was politely suggesting that the pit boss just ring it up. You could tell something wasn't quite right with the guy at the table and it really started feeling cruel. You know? Anyway. The guy ends up losing it all. The crowd that formed to watch was sort of in disbelief and the last time he asks the pit boss if he earned his breakfast. The guy looks over. Sees that he's out of money and says yep. You just earned your breakfast. Congratulations. The player was happy that he won the breakfast but none of us were even sure he understood what he lost to make it. I left the table as soon as that happened. Rather furious that the pit boss was that heartless. I realize it's a business but come on. I rarely play blackjack anymore and I never went back to that casino. Obligatory, I'm not a casino worker. Went to Vegas 3 summers ago. It was my first time. At about 1am. My friends and I were walking through the casino at the win. When we happened on a blackjack table with a $10,000 minimum bet. There was one guy at the table. Alone with the dealer. He was drinking and had the deadest eyes I've ever seen. He played hand after hand after hand after hand. With barely the littlest interest. As $10,000 chips left his pile. At one point while we were watching. A woman walked up to him. Wife. Girlfriend? Hard to tell. He gave her what had to have been a few hundred thousand in chips and she bounced away gleefully. I too would bounce away gleefully in this situation. Not a worker but a guy walked up beside me while playing and told me to put one of my chips on a number on roulette. It came up and then he asked me for some of the money. I politely declined. He then went on saying he has no money but loves to gamble so he comes to the casino and gives advice for tips or looks for drop chips on the floor. If my life ever got to the point. I'd probably walk around looking for semi full. Abandon drinks and pretend to be a waiter and bring them to people so I could hopefully get a tip. Former casino employee. I saw a man come in on his 50th birthday with his kids. They ate at the buffet and then sat down at a machine. The man put a 100 in the machine. Sun twice. But a 50k jackpot and had a heart attack and died. We tried to resuscitate but it didn't work. Did the casino give the kids the $50,000? To me the saddest thing is seeing a relative wheel up an elderly person in a wheelchair or slowly walk up with them in a walker and just get them situated on a machine then leave 4 hours on end without checking back with them. They go and do their own gambling or whatever it is they do. We've had to find their companion ourselves or get security to find them when they need to use the restroom or if we think they should go eat. 
Most of the time the other person is upset they were called to deal with it, sat. It's even worse when they drive them to the casino and just drop them off for the weekend. The weekend. Not a casino worker but there is a cafe with slots right in front of my door. One night. Some guy, who was forbidden to go there, went and lost a good chunk of cash. The bartender called security. They took him out of there and didn't harm him. A cop also came for some reason. And the guy was waiting for a cop car to pick him up. Whilst screaming that he lost this much money and that the security guys were assholes. He eventually left with the cop car. Later he came back. He still didn't do anything bad but this time. Security was way rougher. I think they punched kicked him and he fell. I didn't see this happening. But I overheard him crying and I have heart problems. Please stop hitting me. Seriously. Don't drink and play the slots. Sheet is bad. Damn. That's actually sad. What happened after? We had this guy who had just won a couple thousand on slots. He was super exited and said he would be back to collect after he smoked a cigarette. I was clocking off at the time but overheard one of the texts say he better smoke too reason being if you owe the government money for something like child support for example they can take all your winnings. Which is exactly what happened. I got out of there before he came back inside. Where was this? I've never heard of a casino not paying because you supposedly owe money to the government. How would they possibly know? I never worked at a casino. But I lived in Vegas where they have slot machines inside the convenience stores. I went into a Circle K, I Ike, at about 10am before going into work. I saw a woman going hard at the slot machine with 3 kids running around in her orbit. I went back to the same Circle K after my shift, about 8 hours later. She was there. Going at the same slot machine. The kids were asleep in the seats next to her. I can't say she was there the whole time but it was pretty sad nonetheless. She was there the whole time. I guarantee it. Comma. Calling the poils due to her child locked in a hot car is a near daily occurrence. Old people cheating on the floor so they don't have to go far from their slot machine. Old people dying at their machines. A grown man in a full on toddler tantrum, laying on ground flailing legs arms, because he got cut off by the bar. Obvious pros t toots arguing that they are legitimate patrons. My main contracts in the security industry are gaming rooms. Sports bar in back for race betting. 60 pokey, slots, machines in front. Literally working in one now. And I have a metric duct and a sad sheet I see daily. As I'm on the job I'll chuck a few down and expand on them when I can. Elderly man gambling hard enough to forget his meds. Has heart attack. Many. Many dead eyed junkies dropping panhandled cash to win more for Drew Gus. Dead related A assaults. Had two stabbings in a month on site. Drug overdoses when those junkies I mentioned come back for more. Up to about 19 or so in 8 years on this particular contract alone. Daily police calls to chase up parents of kids running around the back alley entrance. We tried and track them down in here. They ignore us and keep pushing the buttons. Got a ban wall like the Sistine Chapel due to this. Elderly patrons who genuinely have nothing better to do and are just starved of attention. Same people. Every night. For hours on end. Most are lovely. Problem gamblers. One bloke I've banned from here 7 times now. Always back on the day the ban expires. Upper management apathy. As long as their genitals are covered and they got a 20 in their hand. All are welcome. This was recently rectified when a previously banged problem patron beat the sheet out of a female staff member and I. Re-educated him. Tried to pin the whole thing on me. 2. Will expand on ones if asked. Immo gaming room should be shut down. And only have a large central casino instead. These bloody things destroy lives. I'm not a casino worker. Neither is my father. But. My dad used to have a hobby on Friday nights. He would get a beer and a pack of cigarettes and sit outside a casino and people watch. He would stay a few hours so he would see people go in. Paycheck in hand. Only to leave hours later with nothing. 
he overheard a lot of phone calls where people would call their spouses in tears. Saying that they had lost everything. Even once. He said he overheard a dude call his wife sobbing. Saying he had lost their house. He almost never saw someone walk out happy.